Hello folks, it's Usman, Bards and Books, and today I am giving a recap as to what I read in October, and a glance at November as to what I'm going to read, so let's just get down to it. The first book I read in October was The Soul of Chaos by Gregory Wunderlin. This is book one in Litanies of the Lost Star, it's an epic fantasy series. Uh, this was an arc I read, it, the book comes out October 26, 2023. Now, I did have some issues with it. Um, there is a lot that, that has the potential to make this series, you know, a really grand epic series that should garner a lot of attention, but there are some things missing for me personally. So, first of all, let me just mention that I think the world building done here, the intricacy with the world building, the, the people, the characters, the cultures, the politics, as well as the magic system, those are all done in a fantastic way. Um, I really enjoyed that. I that was a big reason as to why I actually finished this book um, and decided to review it so very impressive there that's all that's all cool the cons that I had here there are three major things so first is the prose here the prose is pretty well done I mean the the use of language is impressive however it is a bit of a detriment overall because it just it came off a little too highbrow for me the, the wording, the, the choice of words. You know, we have phrases here that are constantly used, like, for example, the word countenance is always used to describe people's facial reactions or whatever. And, and while that is a, an impressive word to use, reading phrases over and over, like, she smoothed her countenance, it just, it, it threw me out of the story a bit, you know? Um, a lot of times, for me, simpler is always better, you know, keep it simple and, and it just draws me in more, but yeah, here, that's just one small example, phrases like constantly reading, oh, she smoothed her countenance, or her countenance showed this and that, it's like, it doesn't, it didn't work for me, it didn't, it didn't, uh, it threw me out of the story at times, so, so the prose was a little weird in that sense for me, um, the second thing here, is the setting. This might have been the biggest issue I had. The setting, while we at times we know exactly where these characters are, there are other times where I was completely lost as to where they are or what exactly was going on because I appreciate, look, I'm a guy that appreciates not too much description and setting, you know? I only need a little bit, I only need some morsels here and there and I can do the rest of the work myself. I can I can picture it myself. However, this is way less than that. This is this was enough for me to constantly read and just imagine these characters going through in interactions or action scenes all within a, a void of darkness. So there was you know I couldn't picture any background. I couldn't really get a feel for where we were. So the atmosphere was very much ruined for me. It was all, it's almost as if you're watching a, a play and it's like a black backdrop, you know what I mean? Like the setting, it, it was just, yeah. It was, it was cool watching these characters through these action scenes and interacting with one another. But there was no setting for me. There was no, there was no background. It was all just, it was all just done in, in a, like I said, in a black void. So that was the major thing that I really wanted to see more of more just take a bit more time to describe the setting you know what's around us just paint a little bit of a bigger picture for us that's what I would have appreciated the third thing that I I had trouble with was the amount of characters now look I've read lots of series with tons of characters uh, but here we are introduced to way too many too quickly and there's nothing to distinctly point out each character or or make you remember each character um, so oftentimes I would forget who a person was or what their motivation was. I would have appreciated just a, a little more time fleshing out each character. So, you know, if you're going to have them in scene after scene, it would be nice to remember who they are or, or you know, which side they're on, what, what their motivation is, you know what I mean? So that was the third thing that I had trouble with. Those three things really um, made this not a very enjoyable read for me. But I finished the book, I reviewed it. And like I said, the only reason the only reason for that was because I think this has the potential to be a grand epic 
series that I think everyone should be talking about only because of the aspects like I said of the world building and the magic system it's just it's all fleshed out very well it's very well done but yeah those three things that I mentioned are just severely lacking the second book that I read was sins and sorrows this is a collection of short stories and novellas in the world of the protectors of Britanni by Mike Molman so this is book 1.5 I believe it's kinda in the middle of 1 and 2 just to give more context or enrich the world I guess which it did a great job of what we have here is three short stories pertaining to Grame the main character from becoming a druid just to give a, a little more info as to some stuff that happened in his past and some stuff in the present as well which was fun and then we have two novellas which pertain to Conwyn and Alfswitch respectively um, I enjoyed those as well it like I said it helped this book helped to enrich that whole world much much more um, we got to see a lot of other locations and and the cultures of the people there it also helped to establish a lot of events that have taken place outside of our main POV from Grame from the first book like I said so it'll be really interesting to dive into book two and see you know what's become of all these characters or how their their dynamic is going to be going forward um, and I think this just reminds me of how of Molman's writing style and how it's very reminiscent for me of like classic fantasy stories like for example I'm, I've been reading uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights recently and it's just it it's a little it reminds me of that <laughs> so take that as a compliment <laughs> um, but yeah that and combined with the first person uh, narrative that's told in these stories it just it works it works well so the third book I read in October was partial function this is an arc that was provided to me by the author JCM Byrne the book is released on November 7th of 2023 and I enjoyed this a lot. First of all, if you enjoy Byrne's other work, like The Hybrid Helix, this is absolutely a must read as well. He delivers with his accessible prose, once again, he's very reliable in that sense. Um, his element of mystery that he's able to add to these stories is just remarkable and it, it will, it just kept me turning the page. I didn't want to stop. I needed to, I needed to get to the bottom of those things. So that's impressive. Um, and his humor, you know, his humor is on par here as well. You can always rely on Byrne for good humor in his books. So, what, what do we have here? We have, um, we have clans, like martial arts and magic it ties in very strongly. So, we got martial arts, clans, we got some deadly creatures, like dinosaur-ish, kind of, in that vein. It's pretty cool. But if you're new to Byrne's work, some things that he does exceptionally well um, are first the plotting. His plotting is magnificent. If you want stories with a, a great strong plot, if you're a very heavy plot driven reader, then this is the author for you. Uh, the other thing he does well are the, the twists and the reveals. You know, there are things that will get at the very beginning and you're just like, oh, okay, I, I want to know what's going on here. So it'll just keep, like I said, it'll just keep you reading. It just kept me reading. Um, so the twists and reveals are very, very, very cool in his work. And thirdly, of course, the humor. I mean, that's the biggest draw to, to Burns work. If you want humor, if you want a funny read, read Burns work. Now I've read two more, uh, well, listen to, I got into audiobooks. Uh, I have been talking with a friend of mine who listens to audiobooks and specifically of the lit RPG subgenre, progression fantasy, if that's what you call it. He's gotten me into that, so I've been I've been listening to a couple audiobooks. Um, the series is called Everybody Loves Large Chests. It's it's lit RPG. Uh, I'm can safely say that I will be doing audiobooks going forward, but specifically for lit RPG, I think that works very well. So I've been listening to that series. It follows a mimic. If you don't know what a mimic is. Think of like a, a treasure chest, but it's not really a treasure chest, it's a trap. It's like it got teeth and it just eats you. So that's a mimic. It follows a mimic as it just progresses, it levels up. I will be discussing it more in the future. Um, 
but I'm enjoying it a lot so far. I think the audiobook, the, the narrator, Jeff Hayes, does a phenomenal job with all the characters and stuff. But yeah, so I've read Volume 1, which is Morningwood, and Volume 2, which is Fizzle Sprocket, and I am just in the middle of Volume 3 right now. What is it? Fortana? But anyways, the series is called Everybody Loves Large Chests. Audiobooks, I feel like audiobooks I will absolutely be reviewing in a different light. There's no way I can review them in the same same element as, as physical books. That just, it works. It's two completely different experiences. So those audiobooks I've been given five stars. You know, they're phenomenal. Um, and yeah, that's just where I've been at with the month of October. Now for November, what I will be reading, well, I'm going to be listening to volume three and four of Everybody Loves Large Chests. Uh, and then I will simultaneously be getting into the final book of the First Law Trilogy, which is Last Argument of Kings. I've been looking forward to this for a long while. I was supposed to read it in October, but it's been pushed, as well as my next read, which is Memories of Ice, book three, and Malazan, Book of the Fallen. Um, yeah, I was supposed to get in this in October too, and, well, you know how it goes. So... Those are my priorities. Those are the two things I will absolutely be reading in November. Um, as well as one other thing that I can safely say will absolutely be happening in November. And that is the audiobook I will be starting of Dungeon Crawler Carl, that series. I'm starting it with my buddy. We kind of picked a series to buddy read or listen to together. So that's going to be it, and I'm very much looking forward to it. I've heard a lot of great things. We'll probably be discussing that in the future as well. So those are my priorities for November. I'll probably have time to get to other stuff as well. Not sure what it is yet, but you know, I kind of wanted to give myself that room, that space to 100% finish the stuff that I want to finish and maybe get to some other stuff. So those are the books I'll be reading in November for sure, and that's the end of this video. So thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you next time.